What's up everybody, it's Chicago Talk Show host. I'm here today in this video to review Matt Walsh's documentary called What is a Woman? So if you haven't heard about it, definitely check it out. You can find it on his website, whatisawoman.com. You can find it on the Daily Wire. You gotta sign up to watch it. And I highly recommend that you do. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the documentary already, I recommend that you do before you watch my video review on it. What I decided to do is break this review up into moments for me that stood out and giving you my perspectives on that. One of the things I really liked about this documentary was the candid interviews he did with other people. He exposed the group think mentality. You're not even an individual anymore. You're just a zombie spitting out slogans that you don't, you, you maybe understand, you don't entirely understand and it's telling. And so that was a lot of fun to watch. A lot of the language that some of the people that he interviewed was very interesting to me. As they were interviewing, he had posed a question and the person who does the sex change operations, who is uh, a trans woman, she used the word Faustian in regards to the exchange regarding surgery. And that's interesting to me because there's nothing good about a Faustian pact and Goethe, Goethe writes about this story about this Faust. So who is Faust? Faust is this sort of sort of quasi wizard magician fellow, right? He's he's dabbled in some things like alchemy, you know, sort of the occult magic sort of thing, and he has a woman that he, that he wants to capture the heart of. And so what happens is he starts scheming for ways to to get her. So that right there should tell you something. This is somebody, who, this is a character who's, again, pictured as wizard, he's, he's an occultist, he doesn't mind dabbling in magics, right? And he, he wants this girl, so he's driven by his passion, right? Particularly lust. But maybe it's not lust, maybe it's whatever, but the point is he's, he's driven by his passion to pursue this girl by any means, get this girl into his life. And so by Faustian is Faust ends up making a deal by summoning a, a figure, and his name is Mephistopheles, regarded as a certain devil figure, right? And so he, he conjures Mephistopheles from a flame, and he tells this person what he, you know, first he's just like, he's stunned. He's like, who, who are you? I, I, did I really summon you? And he uses his services to quote unquote, woo this younger girl. So this is the essence of the Faustian pact, is that you can use the forces of darkness to get what you want. That's where that saying comes from. Be careful what you wish for, because you may very well get what you want. And that's not always entirely regarded as a good thing. So it's a wicked pact, and it's a losing pact, and you don't win in Faustian pacts. You lose in Faustian pacts. And not only do you lose, but you lose big. And so that's the moral of the story of that. And so there you right, go. So can we talk about the based old dude that owns the store with all the toys? That guy is awesome. I mean, he is, it, it's interesting to say, and there's, there's, a lot, there's so much hate on like boomers and you know, this sort of old generation mentality, but he's not some like this articulated scientist or anything like that. He's just a, another person, he's a storekeep, and he, you know, he's doing his thing. The guy's a boss, right? One of the, another thing that I really liked about Matt Walsh's documentary, What is a Woman, is he's interviewing a person who used to work at pa Planned Parenthood and is a physician for these kids, and you would imagine they're supposed to be advocates for the kids and their well-being and their health, and to hear the way they twist and manipulate the their roles, and then to think that they're doing good is that's something to witness see them smile about what they're doing as far as the idea of puberty blockers drugs and giving them to kids right little kids without research long-term research irreversible to give these kind of choices to a child and expect them to expect them to think that they're responsible and they're totally appropriate at that age to determine that level of a choice at that age their attempts to manipulate reality get so extreme that it's so evident to everybody else who understands truth just how far they are disconnected from reality. And that is dangerous. Thrilled that they brought up Kinsey. Kinsey is up there with probably some of the worst people that ever lived, lauded, 
for his work, his work, which is really just documentation of sexual degeneracy and deviancy, as well as ruthless child molestation. He was a monster. Also in this book that you learn more about Kinsey, you learn the people who supported and funded Kinsey. A lot of it has been engineered and purposefully designed to get to this point, and it's all to control you. For more information on Libido Dominandi and part one of my book review, because it's a hefty book, I strongly encourage you to check out my book review on it and let me know what you think. Another moment I liked was his interview with one of the university people and that was interesting. What was really interesting is to, out of it all with that exchange was his inability to tolerate the word truth and the language he used to describe it. I mean, he physically recoiled and takes immediate offense and he attempts to launch these defensive insults which they're weightless because they're not based on anything. It's not even real language. So he uses new speak and insults that end in phobe, right? And that it's, it, it's making him uncomfortable. And what's also telling is when he spoke and he responded to Matt Walsh's questions, he tended to respond in questions of his own as a way of deflecting answering Matt Walsh's questions because he can't. And that's interesting, right? What was especially interesting to me during that exchange is he used the word invoke, that he invoked the word truth. Think about that. Who uses that word invoke, right? People can talk about the truth. People can tell you the truth. You can ignore the truth. You can hear about the truth. You can read the truth. Who says that, um, you know, this idea that you're taking truth and then you're invoking it? That's an especially interesting choice of words. It's a powerful word, right? You invoke something, to invoke the spirit of something, right? And the way he recoiled regarding truth is absolutely telling because the truth is, it just absolutely melts fabrications of reality and subjective interpretations of reality. It doesn't stand a chance. And the more you try to force it and manipulate it or hide it, the more it gets brighter and stronger and just comes out anyway. I think people who try to subvert the truth with all kinds of lies, they distort reality to the point where it's unrecognizable and it's inhabitable. So at the end of the day, I thought it was a great piece of work. I really do hope you enjoyed this movie review on what is a woman. Check it out, let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.